That's right. Y'all ought to stand up. Whenever it seems like that uh, things are going kind of rough, my, my go-to song. You know, worship really does you good. Is that any of you right there, buddy? Can you hear me? Don, whoever is right there. Is this on now? Is the light on right now? I'm loud anyway, yeah. Okay, my go-to song whenever there's snow. You, know, you need to find your go-to song. When I say go-to song, I'm not talking about gloom, be spared, and agony on me. I mean, find you a good old worship song that speaks to you and let it minister to you. Now, now my song is, as long as I can remember, is because he lives. And I can find myself going through problems or going through things or uh, in a hospital all of a sudden I get called as a chaplain. I get called to a place I don't know. I don't know anybody in there. All I know is what's going on with Code Blue or whatever. And I've got to go in and minister. And so I just start singing because he lives because I know God's got this. Amen. And, and, and when we do things like Sister Dorothy the other day, when uh, I was on the way, she died before I got there. When I got in there, they were cleaning her up. And, and I, all the way down the hall, I'm singing because he lives. Amen. That's my go-to song. Find your go-to song. That way you ain't got to try to remember a whole bunch of scriptures and a whole bunch of just sing, just sing a good old go-to song, and it will bring you strength because what it does is it just releases tension in your body. It's like a breathing exercise. It relieves <laughs> tension in your body and in your spirit, especially in your spirit. So we're going to sing Because He Lives again, and we're going to trust God just to touch us. We're, we're here, you know, sit back and look, and, and, and it hurts. In one sense, it hurts because I'm used to seeing Brother Billy and Sister Dorothy and Sister May and Brother Burton. I see Sister Mary back there and I see Sister Kathleen sitting over here. And I see Bethany back there going, woohoo! And they're gone. But I know where they went. And so this lets me know that everything's okay because they've gone to the other side. They're rejoicing. They're having a the kind of service that we don't even know about. Amen. And so, so uh, although it hurts, it doesn't hurt my faith because I believe God's got this. Somebody say God's got this. God's got this. Amen. And so my go-to song, and DC, the, DC the, and this is what he picked today, and, and me and DC don't talk about what song he's going to play. And so the last few weeks, he's just been, he's been all, all the time, especially the last few weeks, he's nailed these things. And one of them is because he lives. So let's sing that. Ready? Go ahead. Because he lives. Philippians chapter 3. 
I told you it would at least be two weeks. Well, guess what? Now we're working on our fourth week, so. <laughs> Isn't that cool? It's taking us a while to get focused. That's right. That's exactly. Hey, that's a good, that's a good one. Isn't God good? All the time. All the time. God is good. All right. Chapter 3. If I'm to say amen. 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 If you haven't, say on me. If you can't find them, start in the Old Testament and work your way through it. <laughs> <laughs> Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. Brother, I count not myself to have apprehended me. I haven't got there yet. So somebody say I haven't got there yet. I haven't got there yet. Yeah, we got a long ways to go. You know, you know, Sister Dorothy, even Sister Dorothy, 90 something years old, I've heard her on many occasions say, I just haven't got there yet. There's some things I still want to do, some things I still need to learn, and some things that, that, that I want to accomplish. So, so even at 90 something years old, it was good to hear her say, I haven't got there yet. Amen. Because it gives me hope. Amen? So, so, my brother and I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, beginning the things which are behind, and reaching forth into those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Father, we love you, we praise your name, we thank you for your grace, your mercy. We know, God, you're alive and well on the throne, Father. We ask you right now, Lord, to touch us, God, to help us see, to know, to understand that you got this. Lord, we thank you, God, that all those people I just mentioned, there's even more. I, can't, I, I, I left out people. There's so many. But over the, lately, Lord, especially in the last few months, we've lost five. I, I ask you right now to touch us, Lord, because I know they were all ready. They all wanted to be with you. They are there. And they're experiencing something that we haven't even read about all of them because the Bible says it had not even entered into the heart of all the things God uh, wants to do for us. So, I ask you right now to help us, God, not to focus on that, on, on that, on our loss because it was their gain, but help us to focus on rebuilding. Help us to focus on picking up the baton and, and going forward, not backwards, not just sitting there wondering what's going on, but to make a difference. Lord, we love you. We praise your name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated on the way down and tell somebody. The past is behind us. The future is ahead of us. God is with us. And nothing, and nothing, and nothing shall be impossible. We got to go. Give a little hand down, friends. You know, a porter loaded down with suitcases followed a couple to the airline check-in counter. As they approached the line, the husband glanced at that pile of luggage and said to his wife, Why didn't you bring the piano too? And she said, are you trying to be funny? He said, no, I really wish you had. I left the tickets there. Oh, I said, that's the new book. I think the new book is rough. Okay. So, so we're going to talk today about keeping, keeping your focus. See, if that guy had kept his focus, he'd have had his tickets when he got to the, to the airplane place. Now, only, only just you know, two slides, just two, and then we're, we're going to start hitting all the things, all right? You know, uh, uh, we're in that rebuild boat. And i got to keep putting this up here because you've got to get this in your spirit. I want you to have this in your spirit. I want you to think about this. I want you to think about this all the time. Whenever you start thinking about, well, we just lost five people, five, five rocks. We just lost five foundations. You know, well, our, they, they were our, some of our physical rocks and foundations, but our rock is Jesus Christ and his word, and our foundation is his word. And so we haven't lost that. Amen. And the other ones, they haven't lost them. They just go on to where we're all trying to get anyway. Amen? And I have discovered that whenever God allows something to be removed from your life, He always replaces it with something else. And so I know that God's going to replace and God's going to do good. Amen? So, so, so when God allows us to get into rebuild mode, and like I said, losing five people since November is definitely going to be put in rebuild mode. All right? So, so what it does is God uses that rebuild mode to draw us out of complacency. We don't have time to be complacent now. we got to be busy about the Father's work. And, and it gets us out of the collapse mode or where we just don't do anything. We just kind of sit there like a vegetable. That's not what God's called us to do. So it draws us out of complacency. And, and, and it draws out of us freshness. Whenever you start working for God, there's freshness. 
And when there's freshness, there's always something special to happen that moves you forward. So remember, rebuild mode. And when we focus, God can do something special. Yes, that's why God always told the people when they had a death just to stop for a while, stop for a few weeks, and, and mourn. Because in mourning, what you do is, in mourning, you think about that person, you think about the loss, and you learn how to let go of what needs to be let go of, and you learn how to hold on to what needs to be held on to. And usually in that, in, and we get confused of what we should be holding on to and what we should be letting go of. So the mourning process is there to help us learn and realize what needs to be held on to and what needs to be let go of. But when we get it right, it doesn't mean that we're healed because we're going to and we're never hurt again because you will always hurt with that loss. But the difference is if you go through it correctly, you can remember with less pain. So, so, so Satan don't want us to realize the potential when we're focused. He don't want us to realize the power and doesn't realize what position it puts us in when we're, when we're focused. So what it does is he wants us to, to realize, look, he's got potential, he's got power, and he's got a position for us with an undivided focus. So here we go. We've been doing this for a few weeks now, so I'm going to kind of run through a couple of them. And I'm not going to stop running through them because God, I, want to, I just feel in my heart. The Lord keeps speaking to me. Drill it, drill it, drill it, drill it. You know, this has got to be in our head because what has happened since this has even started, look at the stuff we've gone through. And now, with Sister Dorothy, you know, we've got to get our eyes on the goal. We've got to get our eyes focused on what God wants us to do because this place is not going down. It's not going under. Matter of fact, this place is not built on people. This place is built on the cross of Jesus Christ and his power and his resurrection. Amen. So, so here we go. You ready? Now, now here's the ten things. And so you know we're going to do ten. So, so as you start counting, you have to figure out how many more sermons there may, may be. Amen. Okay. So now, number one, he called you, and he didn't call you to this place so he can drop you. Our position. He didn't call you to this point in your life so he can drop you. Philippians one and six says. I am convinced and sure this very thing that he that began a good work in you will continue it until the day of Jesus Christ. Right up to the time of his return. Developing that good work that he's doing in you and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. So number one, whatever you're going through right now, Satan can tell you it's over, it's done, stick a fork in you, you're done, that's a lie from hell, you're far from done. If you're breathing, God still has more work for you to do. Look at somebody that said they're breathing. If they're breathing, look at them and say, God, I've still got something for you to do. Amen. If they're not breathing, raise your hand. We'll call 911. All right. <laughs> Number one, God calls you here and to this place too, but he didn't put you here to drop you, but to inspire you and use you. Number two, he did not promise to deliver you from the fire, but, but to walk with you through it. That's our protection. Oh, excuse me, I'll do a power, power, power first. I forgot I had another slide there. See, I'll tell you. Yesterday, let me tell you a little funny on me. Uh, Stuart Ham, uh, I'm going to help, I'm going to do one of the services of a men's conference coming up, and he wanted me to give him a biography of me. And, I, and, and anybody knows me, knows I don't like giving out biographies. I don't like necessarily talking about me. And so, so, so I've been kind of holding back. And yesterday, I saw a telephone call in the funeral home while I was working with Sister Dorothy's funeral, and then I saw him. So I said, hey, he wants, he, well, he still doesn't know where this biography's at. So what I do is I just text him. So I hit text. And when I got home, I just went ahead and text. You know, I've been pastoring 30 years. I'm an ordained church of God uh, bishop, and, and, and then going about that, what kind of education I had, you know, a, a life, well, I mean, a life coach, all this stuff. And as I get through it, I've got like three, three texts. And I sent it to him. I said, now, he, now he'll be happy. I ain't got to worry about it. This morning, I had this to my voicemails. <clears throat> and it was a friend of mine, another minister. His name is Alan Ham. <laughs> Alan Ham called me yesterday telling me that his daughter, she's the one that had the breast cancer now. And, and that was 
gone on the down, she's got spots in her brain. And so he said, he said, I called you to tell you I need a prayer and I want us to talk to you because I know you've been through this with your daughter. He says, and then you send me back a text saying, you're an ordained. <laughs> Church of God Bishop. <laughs> You're in your senior year at Lee University for a second and first <laughs> for counseling and psychology. <laughs> he said, you sent three texts all the stuff that you could do, and that was it. He said, I know you were, every now and then we all need to, you know, Rooster's got a crow in his barnyard. <laughs> <laughs> and here I ride down the road laughing, I'm just laughing. And he said, what is this? I said, they were meant for you, and that was meant for another minister, Ham, that he was asking for this information. I said, he said, why don't you sit down there? I felt pretty, pretty confident to be able to talk to him for some advice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we had a good old laugh when we got through all that. What? We were texting. Why should you send it to before you hit? <laughs> See him. Okay, so. <laughs> All right, so, so, so again, now every now and then we get so busy doing things, we kind of forget, man, I got so busy with this, I forgot there's a second little slide. He will, number two, he will build his church. That's our power. I'm not building this church. You're not building this church. He's building this church because the church isn't made of sticks and stones. The church is made of our flesh and blood. Amen. We belong to him and we're his church. Somebody say, you're looking good, church. Tell somebody that. Oh, come on. Tell somebody. You're looking good, church. Amen. He said, he said this, he said in Matthew 68, yeah, I tell you, Peter, great Petros, which means a large piece of rock, and on this rock, Petra, a huge piece like Gibraltar, I will build my church in the gates of hell. The powers of the infernal region shall not overpower it, be strong and, and, and to its determined, and hold out against it. Why can we do that? Who's got the keys? Jesus, Jesus. Jesus got the keys. Y'all get them keys up and do this one time. Come on. Get your keys out of your pocket. If you got them with you, if you ain't got them with you, ask somebody for their keys. Amen. <laughs> you want to ask the husband about the wrong keys. Amen. All right, we got the keys. Jesus got the keys. A death hell in the grave. Number three. Number three. Number three. He did not promise to deliver you from the fire, but to walk with you through it. That's our, uh, uh, our protection, his presence. Isaiah 43. It says, but now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I'll be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, then it shall not flame kindle upon thee. Now, and this is something really special, because Sister Dorothy hasn't been here through this whole sermon series. Another day she kept saying 432. 432. 432. I said 432. 432. 432. And this might not even be what she was even thinking about, but this is where I went. But she kept saying 432. Isaiah 43 and 2. When thou passest through the waters, I'll be with thee. And through the rivers that shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not burn, thou shalt be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. In God so also. And here's the last one from the few weeks before. And I'm going to keep cutting this down a little bit each, one, each week on these. Come on, buddy, you can do it. But turn it off. There it is. I love this. Disappointments is just God's way of saying, I got something better. Be patient, have faith, and trust God. Number four, there's more in store for you. If you feel like you're at the end of the road, you're not. What I have discovered is there's going to be a mighty army problem this week is when you get to the, when you, when you get to the end of something, you're thinking that it's over, that, that, that God's through with you, when you get to your disappointments, not realizing what you're doing is, God's not walking away from you. God's walking you through a different door. Amen. God's still got something in store for you. Amen. So here we go. Here we go. Brand spanking new. Y'all get ready. You know, I've always loved the Word of God. I love to study it. It's just, it's just awesome. <clears throat> I can't think of anything in this world as far as doing 
that I like to do any better than take God's word and watch it. It's just awesome. I love it. And, and, and I find out no matter how many times I study something, there's always something fresh and new if, when, when, when I need it. Amen? How about you? Amen? When we obey the voice of God, we are unstoppable. Let me stop and just give that to you slowly. When we obey the voice of God, we are unstoppable. The Bible says uh, in Joel 2 and 11, And the Lord utters his voice before his army, for his host is very great, and they are strong and powerful, who ex execute God's word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can endure against it? Well, do it. Joel 2 and 11. I love to hear his voice. I love to hear him talk to me. Sometimes I don't like what he says. <coughs> but I love to hear him talk. It's when he don't talk to me at all. It scares me. Amen? It says, So shall my word go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void without producing any effect. Useless, it shall accomplish that which I please, and purpose, it shall prosper in the thing which I send. Isaiah 55 and 11. And finally, the godly may trip seven times, and they will get up again. But one disaster is enough to overthrow the wicked. Wow. How many years tripped a few times? But you're here. You got back up. Amen. Like I told DC, I imagine DC can still hear this when he's when he's when he's training his his daughter in baseball and Daniel, and when he's with his girls in saw and softball. When he's telling them boys, I've been telling them boys a thousand times, boys, I don't mind you striking out, but you better not strike out with that with that bat on your shoulder. You better strike out swinging. Amen. Don't you strike out with it on your shoulder. If you come back, and you've got three strikes, and that thing's on your shoulder. Me and you're going to have a long talk. I said, well, if you're going to swing and get out, well, all right, that's okay. So, the same way, listen, God, I have fallen many times, but I thank you because you don't count how many times. Listen, God doesn't count how many times you fall. God counts how many times you get back up. One more time. God doesn't count how many times you fall. God counts how many times you get back up. Amen? Yes, God wants us to get up. Don't just lay there and walk. Get up. Praise God. So what if I messed up? Get up. What if I didn't do it right? Get up. Get up. God still got a use for you. Amen? And here we go. This is one of my favorites right here. And this is where we're going to stop. And the more you shout, the quicker I'll get through. <laughs> Amen. Have courage. Be strong. Don't back down or give in to Satan and his plan. Stand. I love it. Watch this. Watch ye. Stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Be strong. Watch ye. Be on guard. Satan, you know Satan's desiring to attack every last one of them. If he was coming at you with a big old machine gun, you would know it. A lot of times it's not the big machine gun that he's bringing at you. He comes at you in such a way as an angel of light and, and have you believe that everything is okay as he lays you down and takes you down. Watch. Be on your guard. Watch out. Sometimes it comes with a strong attack. Sometimes it comes at you another way. But watch out. Keep awake. You know what the penalty for a soldier when they don't keep awake under guard duty? What's the penalty for a soldier? Well, well nowadays, I don't know. Back in the day, I can tell you what it was. It was death. If a guard fell asleep, it was death. That's why the guards at the tomb of Jesus, they were trying to, they, they were, they were scared away. Look at it. He's gone. And. They were going to say they were asleep, but because it was Jesus, they cut us some slack. Because they needed him to, them to witness that Jesus had, 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 they hadn't done anything wrong. So, watch this. Watch ye. Be on guard. Stand fast in the faith. 
Persevere. Don't deviate. Stand strong. You know, I remember, and I probably, I know I've told you, some of y'all heard it so many times, you can probably tell the story for me. One night, we, we had this guy in our church, he was 17, I think, and he was, and he was a second degree black belt, and he was trained by Johnny, I think it was last name, DC, if you can remember it. But this guy here was not only did he train world champions, had several world champions that he trained, he also was a uh, stunt man in Wilmington. And he was in all three of the first Ninja Turtle movies as some of the stunt doubles that were doing stunt guys that were doing all that fighting and stuff. And he was also a stunt man in Young Indiana Jones because it was filmed in Wilmington. And so this guy's a bad dude. And he taught this guy. And walking to his house was like walking in uh, Don the Genie's house because you would see all these trophies. Everywhere you saw these trophies were Marina won all these these trophies. These trophies were not showing up trophies. I got trophies for showing up. They are not for showing up. Those trophies in Marina's, and we're up that stairs, is for getting in and getting it done and not backing down, staying strong. And, and you don't win those trophies. They don't just give them, they don't give a trophy that high for showing up. That's the one you get a little bit thin and you walk in, everybody says, I showed up. Okay? No. But this guy here had the same thing. He walked in his house. They were all up and down the wall for fighting. He was he was great at fighting. And he had all this stuff. He was great with using tools and I mean, weapons. He was great with weapons. And this guy had taught him so much stuff. Well, he was having a problem. His mom and dad had divorced. And his stepdad was 20 years older than his mama. And he just didn't like the guy. The guy was trying to help him every way he could. He did everything he could to make a difference in his life. It didn't matter what he did. He just didn't like him. It didn't matter. I just don't like him. He said, okay, well, you still got to try to live with him. Well, one day, he got in some kind of trouble. And his mama said, I don't know what to do with him. So I went and picked him up and carried him home. I said, if you don't mind, I'll just take him home with me. She said, okay, you can have him. He lived with us for about a month. And one day, his stepdad was having his 70th birthday party at the church. And so we're over there with his mom and his dad and people from the church and friends. And the place was packed out for his 70th birthday party. DC and Danny come running into church and said, Daddy, you better come quick. You better come quick. You better come quick. I said, what is wrong? They said, Greg's got a sword and he's coming this way. His mama had bought him a ninja sword, a real ninja sword. I'm talking about the kind that is so sharp that you can throw an apple up and it's over. He comes walking up and I walk out in the, I walk out of the fellowship hall to the fellowship hall in the, in the parsonage and he's doing like this. Now this is the second degree black belt and this, he's a bad dude. He's going. <laughs> he's already, already freaked out. He's going, I'm going to kill him, I'm going to kill him, I'm going to kill him. And I said, oh, I went, it's, I said, whoa, 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 whoa. And he's holding that sword. I'm trying to be careful because he's holding that sword. And, and, and I can't believe his mama gave him that sword. And I can't believe he's coming up. He was going to walk in the fellowship. I said, who are you going to kill? He said, A.B., which is that, guy, that was the guy's name. I said, why are you going to kill A.B.? He said, he ruined my life. I said, the man ain't done anything. He just married your mama. He said, yeah, but he ruined my life. And he said, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. <laughs> I said, you're not going to do no such thing. And he pulled up the sword. D.C. is my witness. <laughs> Matter of fact, I didn't know what happened to D.C. told me. When he pulled up the sword, that sharp sword, I went to stop him. And I don't know what all happened, honestly. I just know he tangled. And he was on his belly with his arms behind his back. And his feet were right up in my feet. And I had him down, locked. And I was pushing his head in the dirt. And the sword was over there. Am I telling the truth, D.C.? And, then he, and he said, get off me. Get off me. I said, you going to hurt anybody? He says, yeah. I said, then you can stay right there. I said, this you can get his mama. So this he goes and get his mama. He, he's just saying, I don't know how you've done this. I'm a black man. I don't know how in the world you've done this. And he, I'm holding him down. And finally, his mama comes out and sees me laying on her son in the dirt. His face is in the dirt. He's puffing dirt up. And she goes, get off my son. And I said, your son was getting ready to kill your husband. He has a sword right over there. 
And she went, oh no, oh no. Thank you, thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Uh -uh. And when I got up, he said, I don't know how in the world you just did that to me. And I said, I don't even know what I did, son, but you down here. And he said, get off me. I said, what you going to do, big boy? Do something. And he said, that day, that got cocky. <laughs> he said, I'm going to hurt you. I said, well, go ahead. Pull out that black belt. I got one, too. <laughs> got mine from Sears. Come on, let's go. And his mama got him calmed down. He got up, and he said, I don't know how your dad did that to me. He said, I got, he said, I got a, a, I'm, I'm, I'm a second degree black belt. And they said, well, I know how daddy did it. Daddy's got a black belt in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. They said, daddy, we don't know what you did. Said, but you just went like Chuck Norris. He said, you just pulled on back. You did all that with him. You, you threw his sword over there and you jumped on top of him. And I think. <laughs> somebody it's all about them. Let me talk to them. And after I talk to them for five minutes, it's all about them. They haven't grown up yet. And when they're constantly thinking about other people's needs and how to help other people to do things, that's when I know they're growing up. You see, come on up here. Your assignment this week and your focus is to practice God's word. Watch this. Learn how to be on guard. Learn how to stand strong. And ask God to help you if you need to. Some people, but well, we all need to grow. Every last one of us. God help me. Am I just about me? Or am I about others? Am I just about getting my stuff accomplished? Or am I busy trying to help other people get stuff accomplished? God. If all my focus is on me, then I'll never get past the rebuild mode. If I get my eyes off of me, then I can come up out of complacency. I can do something special. I can grow beyond what I thought I could do.
get to heaven. It's going to be such an awesome relief. But until you get there, there's going to be struggle. And I can tell you, <clears throat> although the church and us are going through a rebuild mode, I can promise you, this is not the last rebuild mode we have to go through.
been disappointed. I've been kicked. I've been bruised. I have backed down. God, I need you right now. Everybody pray this. God, right now, I need you to bring me a refreshing. Give me fresh hope. A renewal of hope. A renewal of faith. Help me to step up instead of stepping back. Help me to move forward instead of moving backwards. I rededicate my life to you in the name of Jesus. We give it all to you. And we thank you for what you're doing. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Maybe you're here right now. And this rebuild mode has got your mind kind of out of focus. That's why we're doing this focus right now. You're out of focus. You can't quite see what you're doing. One day I was at the prison and I had my glasses off and I was passing out Bibles and Doug was coming behind me switching them. Because I was giving the Hispanic Bibles to the English-speaking folks and they giving English Bibles to the Hispanic-speaking folks. I had my glasses on. I couldn't see what I was doing. And Doug came behind me and said, <laughs> you got to pardon my master. <laughs> my focus was so off, I was even trying to minister. And I wasn't ministering correctly. I was actually ministering more <laughs> trouble than I was anything. Because if you can't speak Spanish, how can that Bible help but I had lost my focus physically. Some of us have lost our focus spiritually and we're needing God to help us rebuild that focus so we can get in rebuild mode, grow, get in there, step up to the plate, be used by God in such a special way. Things you will be doing, you have no idea you can even do them because the opportunity had not made itself available. But the opportunities are making itself available now. Now you can start seeing things you can be doing that you never thought you could do. And every head bowed, every eye closed. This rebuild mode may frighten you. This rebuild mode may actually mess your mind up and you're trying to figure all these things out. We're trying to figure it out. And yes, you may be fearful, but it comes a time when you got to do it afraid. There's not a week goes by that I don't step forth through something, that I don't do it with some kind of anxiety. I hate to say fear, but sometimes even fear. I just got to step up and do it afraid. And once I do it afraid, I'm not afraid anymore because now I understand. Some of y'all's fear would go away if you would just keep stepping forward and do it afraid and let God do something. Every hip out, every eye closed. If you're in here, this rebuild mode's got you, a wheelroom or it's got you walking in fear or you're not, not thinking you're up to the challenge, whatever it may be, but we're in rebuild mode and you're ready for God to use you, but he's got to help you get over this hump. Nobody looking around, but just put that hand up. I, I need God just to help me, just to push me over the hump. To help me to get me through this. We're going to say it together again. Ready? All together. Father, I really want to grow in this rebuild mode. I have a few stumbling blocks that I need you to help me get beyond. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, Help me spot you. Help me watch you, Lord. Turn my stumbling blocks into stepping stones. And I thank you for it right now. And Lord, right now, help me. If I have to, do it afraid. And I thank you. In the name of Jesus. Give Lord a hand clap. Now, if you need anything else, hold us right. Anything else? We're not going to not have the altar open. Anybody else need anything? The altars are here. You can come on up. Don't forget Tuesday night, no service here. And we're going
going to put it on the web page. Three weeks from now, let's see, we got two more weeks of, of, of this other, and then we're going to go right in to what we call it. Live now, live strong, getting beyond, and you fill in the blank. All right? So it'll be three weeks then, I think. Let's be called, here's what it's be called. Live now, live strong, get beyond, and you can fill in the blank what you're trying to get beyond. But this is going to help you with fear. It's going to help you with depression. It'll help you with PTSD. It'll help you with CTSD. It will help you with all kinds of things. If you learn to live now, live stronger. So it's coming up, and, and just so we got two more to do, but we got this week we're having, we got the funeral next week's the 4th of July, so I don't think we'll have it next week either because of 4th of July. So eventually we got two more loads, then we're going to go right into live now, live strong, getting beyond whatever. Okay, whatever you got to get beyond. Fear, depression, anger, this is going to help. Isn't God good? All the time. All the time. That is good. Amen. Brother the way, we just missed some prayer, please. Father God, we thank you for another chance to be in thy house and hear thy word. Lord, we fellowship with so, Thank you for the message that was sent upon us today, Lord. Let us go out and meditate upon it. Father, we depart this house. Let us remember one thing. We're out here to serve you. Now go with us and keep us safe and bring us